From KWCH 12 Eyewitness News, breaking news. I grabbed a guy out of his truck and uh, semi truck, and we were driving with fire on both sides, zero visibility, and uh, just praying with me. Thousands of acres across Kansas burn. Thousands forced to evacuate as wildfires burn out of control. The fire threat continues this morning. We have Team 12 coverage, so you can be aware of the fire risk before you start your day. We have Pilar Pedraza live in Hutchinson. More than 10,000 people there had to leave their homes. And we also now know that one person has lost their life because of the fires. We'll get to Pilar in just a moment. But first, Mark, will fire crews get any sort of break today? Well, they're getting a break right now. Wind speeds are less than 10 miles an hour. And in fact, in the 5 o'clock hour, it was calm in Hutchinson, now a west wind at 9 in Hutch, west wind at 7 here in Wichita. And just look at the numbers, find a town near you, and you'll know these numbers compared to Monday pale in comparison. We were already dealing with 60-mile-an-hour gusts at times uh, by the early morning hours yesterday. The gust map today, blank. So that's some good news to share right now. Winds are going to pick up, though, as we work our way through the rest of the morning and into the midday hours. It's around 15 miles an hour here. Wichita and Hutchinson by 8 a.m. By the time we hit the lunch hour, 20 to 25 mile an hour winds gusting to near 30 miles an hour, yes. But again, no gust to 60 expected today. The winds will not be as wicked is what I'm trying to say. So those wind speeds, 5 to 15, sunshine, low to mid-30s. It's much colder out the door this morning. Mid-40s by 10 a.m., 56 by noon. We're looking for high in the mid-60s and some wind gusts around 30 miles an hour as we work our way later into the day. Tomorrow, lighter winds, even lighter on Thursday. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. One of the fires we've been tracking is this one north of Hutchinson. It's near the Highlands neighborhood. We told you yesterday morning it was largely contained, but that changed yesterday afternoon when the winds allowed the fire to break the containment lines, sending it back towards homes. Much of that neighborhood has once again been evacuated. Pilar Pedraza joins us live this morning with the latest on the fire. Pilar. For those evacuated, finding out what's going on in that evacuation zone behind these barriers is of primary importance. Now, we haven't had a whole lot of word on that for several hours, but we just learned there will be a briefing at 7 o'clock this morning. We'll be headed there in the next few minutes. But because of that lack of information overnight, many people spent the night watching the skies as the fire advanced. We're apprehensive, you know. Um, we're just hoping it doesn't. The fire chased Stephen Adams and his wife from their home of 30 years Monday. They sit in a church parking lot miles away, watching the orange flames flicker on the horizon, wishing they could do something to save their home. I kind of wish I'd stay home so I could water my house. But they said mandatory, and the wife kind of panicked, so we, we got out. Adams isn't the only one wishing he could help. Leo LeClaire has family living right on the edge of the evacuation zone. He sits in his truck in the same parking lot as Adams, watching to see if the flames get close to his family and wishing he could do something to help stop the blaze. You can't just stand here and watch and not want to help, you know, so... Yeah. It makes me want to try to go see if I can be a volunteer fireman or something like that. Others are here because they live in the pre-evacuation zone, ready to get the order to leave at any time, depending on what the fire does. They're worried, too. Uh, I'm just kind of watching the wind and trying to make sure how everything's going as far as the, the flames and everything from that point. I have a lot of friends up in that area. They all agree one thing would make everything better right now. I wish this far was out. I wish we'd get some rain in this part of the country. I really do. We need some rain terribly bad. Now, over the course of the morning, we have seen several people come up to these barriers here where the officers are waiting behind the road close sign and try to talk their way through, hoping to get inside that evacuation zone and find out a little bit more about what's been going on. But all of them so far, police have turned back. We may get some of those answers at this meeting coming up here at 7 o'clock. Pilar, thank you. We want to bring you the latest on the evacuations this morning there in Reno County. It's for the area between 108th Avenue, K61, Hendrick Street, and 30th Avenue there to the south. An evacuation shelter has been set up in Hutchinson at the state fairgrounds. Reno County Emergency Management says you can enter at 20th and Poplar, then go to the encampment building. We are also following breaking news in western Kansas. Hundreds of people in Clark County 
are waking up in shelters. This involves people in Comanche County as well. They had to evacuate. You can see the huge flames in this area. At one point, this fire surrounded the city of Ashland. Emergency officials say there is damage across Clark County. We know eight buildings were destroyed in Inglewood. We're also still being told that US 160 is still closed. It is unsafe to try to enter protection or Ashland protection was also evacuated. And if you are looking for loved ones who might have evacuated from Clark County, they're likely at Coldwater High School. That is the shelter that's set up for anyone affected by these fires. Shane Kanicki is on the road to Coldwater. You can expect live updates when he arrives. And also, troopers say the wildfire um, in Clark County is responsible for killing an Oklahoma man. 39-year-old Corey Holt died yesterday. Troopers say his uh, he left his jackknifed semi. He says Holt wrecked while trying to avoid smoke along K-34. This happened at seven miles west of Ashland, right in the heart of the Clark County fire. You'll notice the ticker running at the bottom of your screen. There are a couple of school districts and schools that are closed today because of all the fires. Kids in Bueller, Nickerson, and South Hutchinson are, and the Coldwater Comanche County School District will all be closed today. Central Christian is closed as well. Central Christian in Hutchinson. Another fire in Ellsworth County forced hundreds of people to leave their homes in Wilson and parts of Dorrance. At one point, the smoke was so bad, troopers shut down I-70. The interstate did reopen last night just before 10 o'clock. It was a scary scene for people near the fires, including one trucker who had to be rescued by the Kansas Highway Patrol. Smoke coming in, can hardly breathe. I was just hoping to get out of there. I was just hoping that there wasn't a car stopped in the middle of the road. That, that we would just run run right into. Everyone in Wilson who was forced to evacuate was allowed to go back home last night around 10 o'clock. All right, here's the latest on the fires burning across Kansas. In Hutchinson, at least 10,000 people were forced to evacuate because of a fire between K-61 and 30th Avenue. Fire burning in Clark County forced people in the towns of Ashland and Inglewood to evacuate. Also, the town of Protection in Comanche County forced to evacuate. Fire in Ellsworth County got dangerously close to homes, prompting evacuations. Those evacuations were lifted last night. If you were looking to find people who've been evacuated in Reno or Clark counties, here is where you can find them, or at least a place you can begin to look. The Kansas State Fairgrounds in Hutchinson or Coldwater High School in Comanche County. We'll continue to follow these fires all morning. Look for updates as we get them on your KWCH mobile app. We didn't just see wildfires yesterday. Parts of Kansas saw strong to severe thunderstorms, too. We were southwest of Leon, where spotters say a brief tornado touched down. The National Weather Service has not confirmed that. We could get that information today, but you can definitely see the damage from the storm. Eyewitness News talked to the person who lives in this home, who says there's debris everywhere around his house. The deputy fire chief in this part of the county says they're expecting to see more damage once the sun comes up. When it gets daylight, we can come up with a better deal. I know there's some damage on the truck and, and damage to the building. Witnesses near Leon say they saw a funnel cloud. The storm did prompt a severe thunderstorm warning. A much worse situation in the Kansas City area, also breaking overnight. Uh, in for a lot of cleanup, at least two tornadoes touched down last night. The Johnson County Airport in Olathe was affected. You can see the damage uh, there to planes and the airport hangar and also the fences, all the infrastructure there. Hangars crumbled by the strong winds. A nearby gas main also ruptured. Last check, the airport is closed to all traffic. There was a large line of this, this storm, you know, really spanned several states, causing a lot of damage, regardless of whether it was tornado or straight line winds. And right now you're looking at quite a few tornado reports. Yeah, over two dozen tornado reports, Scott, and affecting five states here, eastern Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, and even parts uh, of uh, the Midwest farther to the east. Look at all the hail and wind wow. reports here, too, as well. Again, that was last night through early this morning. And severe weather continues to be a concern for folks off to the east. Uh, the Missouri boot heel getting pounded hard by some storms right now. St storms stretch all the way down to those areas southeast of Little Rock, all the way up here through the lower Great Lakes. And the threat for severe weather ongoing right now with severe thunderstorm watches out for a big portion of southern Missouri, northern Mississippi, and northern Louisiana. Later on today, this yellow area, slight risk for more of the same, hail, damaging winds, and the possibility of tornadoes. Today at 10 a.m., except for Reno County, where the wildfires are being battled, there will be a test tornado siren sounding. A great time to practice your safety drills at homework or at school, part of Severe Weather Awareness Week here in Kansas. 
Rain in the forecast, it's a little ways down the road, and lighter winds, too. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes. All right, your Storm Team 12 weather app will keep you updated on severe weather from the fires to the tornadoes. You can use the GPS in your phone to give you the latest information wherever you are. If you do not have our app, just search KWCH in your app store. The haze and your health, the damage smoky skies can do to your body. And we're still in Hutchinson this morning. Thousands of people evacuated to, due to a fire north of town. Pilar Pedraza is out there. We'll continue to check in with her throughout the morning. Expect more from KWCH 12. This is Eyewitness News This Morning in high definition. Online at KWCH.com. Follow KWCH on Facebook and Twitter. With wildfires ongoing, we want to keep these wind speeds in front of you this morning. Now waking up to wind speeds less than 10 miles an hour. Salina, Hutch, Wichita, Winfield, Medicine Lodge, and points east to the west. Wind speeds running around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Winds expected to ramp up as the morning grows longer and into the afternoon. Still dealing with dry grass, very low humidity. The air super dry out there. So again, the red flag warning for extreme fire danger continues this afternoon through the early evening hours. And behind the potent cold front that stirred up the wicked winds yesterday and the severe weather, well, we're dealing with wind chills this morning in the teens to the west. Now single digit seven in Garden City. Dress for 23 Wichita, 27 Hutch, 25 Salina, 21 Great Bend, 17 in Dodge. So firefighters not only fighting the blaze, but also the bitter wind chills, in, at least by March standards, right? All right, here's the w future track wind. West at 20 miles an hour in Goodland already by 9 a.m., the time beneath the 12, running around 15 miles an hour here in the east. As mentioned, the winds get stronger here, central and eastern Kansas, as the day grows longer. And by 5 o'clock, winds are already starting to simmer down just a smidge in the west but still huffing and puffing about 20 to 25 miles an hour here in the east. After the sun sets, I do think the winds will start to back down fairly quickly. Forecast specifics for today, upper 50s for Goodland, lower 60s for you in Garden, 62 likewise Salinas, 63 Hutch, 64 Wichita, 65 for Dodge, lots of sunshine today. Still breezy tomorrow, but not even as strong the winds as today. Temperatures will warm into the upper 60s to low to mid 70s. Rain chances, we desperately need some. Looks like late Friday into early Saturday, central and eastern Kansas stand a pretty good bet to get wet. This will be closer to, well, midnight, I believe, in eastern sections of Kansas. And then Saturday morning, still looking at some lingering rain chances as well. Timing and amounts are still something we're working out, but something that at least we're happy to see a chance for rain toward the end of the week. Many of you are using your KWCH mobile app to show us what the fires are like near where you live. Chrissy took this picture near Ashland. And you can see the fire across all on the horizon in this picture. She said in the caption, it looked never ending, which is a terrifying thing to think. Yeah. Andy from Dodge City sent us a picture of the fires near there. Look at all that smoke you can see in the distance. He took it near Highway 56 and 281 on the south edge of Dodge City. And also, Isaac took a picture of a site many of you saw yesterday in Wichita. Yeah, a hazy sunset. You can see with the thick smoke from the fires in Hutchinson and out west due to the air in Wichita. Do you have any pictures you want to share? Send them to us. You can upload them on your KWC, on KWCH.com or your KWCH mobile app. Time now is 616. Wichita police say a fiery car wreck near Harry and Greenwich was likely a result of a medical issue. You saw the story first last night as breaking news on Eyewitness News at 10. Police say the driver uh, veered off Greenwich near Funston, drove through a field and hit a tree. And that's when the car caught fire. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene. We'll ask more about this case during today's daily police briefing. That starts at 930 this morning. A federal judge will hear arguments today to see if the FBI should disclose information about its wiretaps involving several people, including the Stephen Brothers and Central County Commissioner Michael O'Donnell. The Wichita Eagle is behind the hearing. It argues it should be privy to information about the wiretaps since its reporters had their calls with O'Donnell recorded. According to documents filed in federal court, the FBI says disclosing the reason behind the wiretaps would jeopardize its investigation. The FBI has been tight-lipped in this case. We know the Stephen brothers, Rodney and Brandon, as well as Danny Chapman, Davin Flax, were all wiretapped, including Michael O'Donnell. Brandon Stephen also told the Eagle he's the subject of the investigation due to his high-stakes gambling. No one has been charged in any connection to the wiretaps. 
The Northwest High School community is dealing with the loss of a 15-year-old student who died because of a skiing accident. Tess Smith died this weekend. She was in Colorado skiing, and her brother says she broke her leg, adding that doctors gave her medicine before assessing the broken limb, but Tess lost consciousness and did not wake up. Her family took her off life support late Sunday night. She was a sophomore at Northwest High School. The school district brought in grief counselors yesterday and will continue to support grieving students, teachers, and staff. Extreme fire danger for just about the entire state. That red flag warning and remains in effect from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. this evening. Uh, winds right now running 5 to 15 miles an hour. This will probably be the calmest part of the day. As even as we approach the 7 and 8 o'clock hours this morning, we do expect the winds to pick up. Wichita and Hutchinson, wind speeds around 15 miles an hour as we head toward 8 o'clock this morning. By 2 o'clock, sustained winds out of the west at 25 miles an hour. I'll be looking at some gusts over 30 at times. Storm Team 12 seven-day forecast. Windy 64 today. Lots of sunshine. Warmer tomorrow. Still on the breezy side tomorrow, but the wind trend over the next several days will call for, well, decreasing winds at least through Thursday. Winds will ramp back up again on Friday, and it'll be breezy once again by week's end. 64 Friday. Rain and thunderstorm chances arriving, it looks like, late Friday night or into Saturday morning. For primarily central and eastern Kansas, wish I had a better outlook for you in the west, but at least some rain will help with that fire danger. A little bit cooler to start the weekend, 57. Sunday, the high 60 degrees as we spring forward. Seven-day forecast for Salina. You two looking at rain and thunderstorm chances by Friday night. Saturday, morning rain, some partly cloudy skies later in the day. It'll probably be a gusty northeast wind as we work our way through the afternoon. Just a slight chance for a shower Saturday morning in northwest Kansas. Unfortunately, no rain for you in the southwest. Temperatures trending cooler into the mid to upper 50s by Friday and Saturday for most of the west. Rebounding quite nicely back into the upper 60s by Sunday. Time now to hand down some birthday wishes. Happy birthday to Cadence Brozak. Love the picture. Hope you have a great day today, Cadence. Also celebrating a birthday today is Joyce Nolan. It's also Angela Hall's birthday. Angela, hope you have a great day. And Leslie Weedle, congratulations. You're the winner of an Eyewitness News This Morning coffee mug, and that is provided by McPherson Dental. President Donald Trump remains confident his revised immigration and travel ban will withstand any possible legal challenges. The president signed the new order yesterday while his aides faced tough questions about his claims that his predecessor wiretapped his New York office before the election. Hannah Daniels has the latest. Dozens of protesters gathered outside the White House Monday night, hours after President Trump signed version two of his travel and immigration ban behind closed doors. Your Muslim ban 2.0 is still unconstitutional and still illegal. The new order, which takes effect next week, temporarily bars new visas from six countries for 90 days. Unlike the first order, this one does not include Iraq nor does it apply to current visa holders. In addition, refugees from Syria will no longer be barred indefinitely. We are identifying ways to improve the vetting process and thus keep terrorists from entering our country. Mr. Trump is still pushing for a congressional investigation into whether former President Obama wiretapped his phones at Trump Tower in New York shortly before the election. He would appreciate the House and Senate intelligence committees combining their investigations into Russia, which seemed very attenuated, with an investigation into this issue. Top administration officials struggled Monday to explain where Mr. Trump's accusation originated from. If the President of the United States said that, he's got his reasons to say it. He's got uh, some convincing evidence that, uh, that that took place. Over the weekend, FBI Director James Comey asked the Department of Justice to publicly refute the unsubstantiated claims. All eyes will be on Director Comey today as he attends the opening of a new FBI office in Boston to see if he comments on the matter himself. Hannah Daniels, CBS News.